Hello and welcome back to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to talk about the ear. The ear has three parts, the external, the middle and the inner ear. And today we're going to talk about the external ear or auris externa, the different parts, what they do, the blood supply innervation and the lymph drainage. So let's get started. So the external ear is compromised of the auricle and the external acoustic meatus. The auricle helps to catch acoustic signals from the environment, which are led through the acoustic canal or the external acoustic meatus into deeper areas of the ear. In the next video I'm going to talk about the middle ear, but for now we're just going to talk about the outer portion. So, the shape of the auricle varies and is determined by elastic cartilage. But for everyone, it's a funnel shaped fold of skin. The earlobe, so the part where for some people there's an earring, is only fat tissue and no cartilage. It's the only structure of the outer ear, which is only fat tissue. The external acoustic meatus lies in between the auricle and the tympanic membrane or the eardrum where the middle ear starts. The cartilage of the auricle forms two rings, the helix and the antihelix. The helix is the outer form giving part of the auricle. You can see it marked on the poster also. And the antihelix is the inner parallel to the helix running cartilage which also of course stabilizes the whole structure. The entry into the external acoustic meatus is the concha. It's where you put your headphones or a q-tip and it directs the sound waves to the inner portions of the ear. The tragus and the antitragus are partially overlying the concha and the external acoustic meatus is in its outer one-third cartilage and the inner two-thirds are made up of the temporal bone. It's sigmoid shaped or S-shaped which means that it first runs superior anteriorly then slightly superior posteriorly and then it ends off by running inferior anteriorly. Now I want to talk a little bit more about the different structures that you can see again on the poster or I just want to recap them. So we start on the outer portion with a helix which can be divided in the spine of the helix, then the main part of the helix and the tail of the helix and the antihelix in the middle has cruz, the superior one pointing upwards, the inferior one pointing downwards, both of them together form the antihelix. Then we have the fossa triangularis. It lies between the superior and the inferior course of the antihelix. Then the concha, as mentioned before, the entry into the external acoustic meatus and the tragus and the antitragus and the lobule. Now let's come to the blood supply of the ear. It's in general by branches of the external carotid artery and these branches are the posterior auricular artery, the superficial temporal artery, the occipital artery and the maxillary artery. The venous drainage is by the veins that are named the same. So the posterior auricular vein, the superficial temporal vein, the occipital vein and the maxillary vein. And the innervation is also by different branches of the different plexuses. There are two branches of the cervical plexus, which are the greater auricular nerve and the lesser occipital nerve, then the auriculotemporal nerve, a branch of the mandibular nerve, and the facial and the vagus nerve, so the seventh and the tenth cranial nerve. Then the lymphatic drainage is by the superficial parotid, the mastoid and the upper 
deep cervical and the superficial cervical nodes. So in the lymph nodes around the area. Yeah, that's it for now. I hope it was helpful. And in the next video, we're going to talk about the middle ear. And if you like this video, please subscribe to our channel.